Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Lose Redo's on Staten Island Community Television. This has been a very interesting week. There's been um, a lot of different kind of developments, uh, which I won't go into detail, but it, it's been a very positive week for me. Um, there's been a request for me to do some different stuff. Um, one of the requests on some of the videos is, is common dishes that people have a hard time making and uh, redos on takeout food. Um, I belong to several food channels, so I reached out to my fellow foodies, if you will, for some ideas. And they're starting to come in a uh, little at a time. By, by the next show, we'll have more of an update. Um, but the number one leftover is obviously pizza. Um, or Chinese food. Chinese depends. food runs a very close second, absolutely. Um, and we'll get into some more detail. Um, everyone knows I did, or if you're on my YouTube channel, you know I did a... Um, a leftover Chinese food. I, I made a rice ball. Um, Kelly, I know you saw that, um, which is interesting because I didn't send you that video, so that means you were looking on my site, which is a positive thing. That's a shame you guys didn't get to try them because they were absolutely delicious. <laughs> they, they were, were really, so, really so good. good. I made a rice ball of leftover Chinese food, and I had the, I put the, the meat part of it in the center. I put it in a food processor. It was just outrageous. Um, so we're waiting to see um, what the results are, and by the next show I'll have more results, and we'll see how we're going to progress with the redos. Uh, a couple of emails this week. <laughs> Aggie sent me an email uh, thanking me for the meatloaf video. Um, I went out and bought a thermometer. And now I don't have to use my meatloaf as, as a stepping stone in my garden. <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up, folks. Tequisha, <laughs> uh, I hope I pronounced that properly. I hope you did, too. Um, I enjoyed the video. Uh, my meatloaf used to fall apart before I even put it in the oven. Um, so hopefully the meatloaf video helped. And... Um, we're going to get to that in a minute. I had originally did a meatloaf redo. Um, Which is strange because we showed the redo before we actually showed the how to make of the meatloaf. meatloaf. Yeah. Right. And that was some of the emails that had come in. Uh, and they said, all right, we know how to do the redo. Where's the meatloaf? And there was one, and then another email, and another email. So finally, I decided, you know what, I, I need to make the meatloaf. So uh, without further ado, uh, we are going to show the meatloaf video, how I make my meatloaf. OK, so Carl, whenever you're ready, hit the magic button. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Lose Redo's. I saw you on TV. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, Today was a very exciting day. We did our first uh, Staten Island Community Television show. Um, also titled Lose Redo's. That's correct, also. It's like a, uh, kind of like a talk show, yeah. almost. I'm talking yeah. about your YouTube videos. We show the videos, we, we go into a little history about it. Um, we're going to have some guest chefs on, and there's some good things planned. And I'm there too. And Carl is in the control room. Yep. Absolutely. All right, here's what we're going to do today. Zoe Blue sent me an email. So this video is for you. Zoe you Blue. You wanted to do a... It uh, rhymes. Why not? Do I? This, this video is for you, Zoe Blue. There you go. It rhymes. It rhymes. Um, I did a meatloaf leftover video. It's one of the early ones. Way back when. But I never showed you how I make the video. And oh, You mean uh, meatloaf. Uh, meatloaf, what did I say? The video. Uh, the video. We showed so, you how to, well, we didn't show you how to make the video. We the showed meatloaf. you how to make the redo. So I'm going to do uh, this video on making the meatloaf how I do it. Um, and, and I do it very simple. I do not put breadcrumb and egg or in my chopped meat or ketchup 
in my chopped meat. If I'm putting bread crumb and egg, I'm making meatballs, guys. Um, I, I just spice it and put it in the oven. So this is what we do. Here I have about six pounds of chopped meat because I make extra because I want the leftover. Um, I also do some beef seasoning, about, it's one onion, uh, medium size, dice small. I do about a tablespoon and a little bit more of a good steak seasoning. Um, I do about a tablespoon of garlic powder and I do about a teaspoon of white pepper. Um, here I'm adding some celery seed. I do not want to add celery salt. In here I have some cayenne pepper. The celery was about, uh, about a teaspoon. Um, I have some cayenne pepper in here and some. Oh my god. No, that's not all of it. I, I have. There's uh, more. No, I have a <laughs> um, um, another ingredient in there. It's uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Paprika? No. Uh, Allspice? I'll, I'll think of it. No. Eventually, it'll come to him. It'll come to me. Um, at the end of the video. The... You're gonna say that? No. Yeah, by the end of the video. <laughs> so, and then I mix by hand. I do a couple of shots of Worcestershire, and all I do is keep mixing. And mixing and mixing. Yes, you want to marry all these flavors right in there, mix them all up, get them going together. Now because I have six pounds of meatloaf, or six chopped meat, turning into meatloaf, it, I have the oven set for 400. At 350, you're about 40 minutes a pound. 400, you're going to be about a half hour. But you cook the temperature. You don't cook the time. So I'm still looking at three three hours with this. And this is still a small meatloaf in this house. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Now, one of the things I do after I feel it's nicely put together here. I take it out of the bowl and I put it in saran wrap. Give me one second. Time folks. out. Uh, Always wash your hands after dealing with raw Yeah. And what I do here This is starting to look familiar. I, I did this on the racial ratio with a piece of steak I marinated and she flipped out. Okay, so what that does is it kind of tightens up. She was amazed. Mm -hmm. She absolutely was. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? We have the actual video mm -hmm. because the clips that she shows, she cut her reaction out. Oh, did she? Yeah. So, well, we could show the real reaction. We yeah, we can. One. So, which I may do. Yeah. Right here, you'll probably see Rachel Ray flipping out about what my dad just did right there. Yeah, she just kind of did. <gasps> did you see what he just did? Type of thing. And then the applause sign popped up. Um, I do a little oil. Now, look how nice that looks. It looks like a loaf. I am going to pat it down a little bit thinner. Um, because if I don't, it's going to take six hours to cook. <laughs> so I'm going to make it a little flatter. 
even out the surface area. Yeah. You ain't good at this stuff. What? You ain't good at this stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I, I learned from watching. Yeah. So. Okay, so. I'm actually. A little more olive oil. I'm going to put a little more on top because I do. There's one more thing that I do. Um. Now, I did mention that I do not put breadcrumb in the meatloaf. However, I do sprinkle a little on top. Because why not? Um, it gives it that little bit of a crunch. And if you use a panko, this is just a regular seasoned breadcrumb, uh, you get more of a crunch. And folks, you could actually crush up some croutons and put it on top of here. It just gives it that nice bite. Or, you know, the garlic bread that we used in the peasant food dish. That's correct. That would probably be real good real crushed good. up. Throw it in the oven, but don't go away yet. I'm going to do one more thing. Um, Nutmeg. I have no. No, it wasn't I that. Have, uh, when we come back, I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, I always keep a little roux. Done. This is a beef roux in, in my refrigerator. It, it doesn't go bad. It stays. I have some beef stock going here. So basically what I'm going to do is get the gravy working. Um, so this way, later on, and that's really it. It'll, it'll come to a boil, it'll thicken. And that's it, folks. So we're going to let that cook. I'll see you in a couple of hours. Um, now, if Carl's ready, we're going to kind of show you the, the clip from the Rachel Ray show. He, he was there with me, and uh, he kind of filmed it. He caught it on, with his phone. So, um, you ready to roll call? Yes, I am. I just found it. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> she was beside Hello, herself. Welcome to another. Oh, go ahead. She was beside herself. Um, it's a shame we didn't get to see the finished product of the meatloaf, but we'll <laughs> take my word for it. It was very, very yeah. good. Um, it's an old technique. I mean, if you go into any store and, and buy a fresh mozzarella, that's exactly what they do with the fresh mozzarella. They put it in the saran and they spin it tight. Um, I use it if I'm wrapping up food. Uh, obviously, I do it for the meatloaf. Um, you marinate something and you, and you want to keep it just saran and give it a spin. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, come back. You're ready to roll the second half when it comes out of the oven. The meat. Okay. All right, so that's basically that. Um, if you go to the YouTube, my YouTube videos, um, I think we said it was Say Cheese. Yeah, Say Cheese. I think it's the second or the third video that we ever uploaded. Right. Um, that goes into a full explanation. Um, it's a little bit longer than I want to show here, so we just decided to mention it in, instead of showing it. Um, what I do is I take that meatloaf and uh, I slice it really, really thin. Well, thin uh, enough where it holds together. To get Right. You can't slice it paper thin where it folds apart, but it has to hold together. And I use the meatloaf basically like a piece of bread. Um, I put cheese on it. I cover it with another uh, piece of meatloaf. 
And in the video, I baked it, but you can, you can put it on the stove in a pan, you can fry it. I make a grilled cheese sandwich out of meatloaf. Um, it, on a quick meal, it takes minutes. You, you slice it, if you're doing it on top of the stove, if you come home from work, oh, take out your favorite tomato soup, open the can, put it in, in, in on the stove, by the time that boils, the meatloaf sandwich is going to be done. You have tomato soup out of a can? What's wrong with you? You um, don't make tomato soup? Yes, I do. <laughs> but I'm saying for, for most people that are going to come home from work and they want a quick meal, you're under a half hour. Um, you're talking 15, 20 minutes. You're sitting down and eating. Um, so you just open up your favorite tomato soup, do the... Um, the meatloaf grilled cheese, and you're and, eating. It can hurt, hurt nah. to add some bacon onto that too, or yeah, tomato. You can. Um, yeah, you could do a tomato in the sandwich. You could do whatever you want. You could put some chilies in there, um, which I happen to like. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, one of the other things I did with that video is if you make a basic roux, and you want to leave the, blue, the, the roux kind of on the light side because you want to make a bechamel. And, and what the bechamel sauce is, it's, it's a roux, so it's a fat or oil or butter, a, a starch, which is your flour. If you want to make it gluten-free, you use cornstarch. Um, and then you add milk. Once you make the roux, you add the milk, and that becomes a bechamel sauce. And it's, it's a base sauce if you add cheese now to your bechamel sauce you made a cheese sauce and you, you, you could use that on anything yeah i mean you want to use cheddar you you could use folks you know what i say there are no rules you're going to eat it you make it the way you want it uh so you make a basic cheese sauce now if you have some pasta left over in your refrigerator throw it in there if not you want to make a fresh pasta. Here again, if you put up the water for the pasta when you get home from work, by the time the water boils and you drop your pasta, it, the bechamel sauce is done and the cheese sauce is done. So now all you have to do is add your pasta to that sauce and, and then uh, add the meatloaf. And then dice up the, the meatloaf, add it in, and now you have a complete meal. You have a, a mac and cheese with meatloaf in there. Uh, the kids are going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> you did, too. Oh, I absolutely yeah. did. <laughs> um, that didn't last a day. And again, less than a half hour redo. Um, there's so many things that you could do with some leftover meatloaf. Um, you open a can or, or a, um, not a can, a uh, beef stock, uh, put it in there, saute some vegetables, throw it in there, add your meatloaf to the stock, and you have a beef soup. It's going to absorb all that flavor. Oh, guys, you don't throw anything out. What you want to do is utilize... Whatever it is you have in your refrigerator, if you have some uh, leftover spinach, leftover asparagus, leftover zucchini, what, whatever the case may be, throw it in the soup. You got some pasta, cut it up, throw it in the soup. Well, you throw everything into I the throw, soup. <laughs> well, it's a, you make a hearty soup. Um, and now you have no waste. You're eating your own food you're eating something that's left over that you prepared and sometimes the flavor from a leftover it sits in the refrigerator for a day and it just gets outrageously good use it there's nothing wrong with that um here again if you want to do a um if you had some red sauce left over you have spaghetti meatballs or pasta meatballs Use the meatloaf. 
dice them up a little bit bigger. So what you want to do is you want to make a basic ragu. You could make a mononata sauce. Actually, today, um, when we get home, we're going to be filming a, uh, a mononata. We're going to make a basic mononata sauce, and I'm going to show you my way of doing it. And then I'm going to make added a leftover mononata. I'm going to say, here, this is leftover. I'm going to make five different dishes. So if you have a mononata left over, you could make, again, I'm doing five. Um, you don't waste anything. You could make the mononata one time, put it in a, uh, I call it Italian tubware, a polio container, put it in the freezer. We have about... 20 or 30 of them <laughs> filled with at, sauce. At least. Sauce and soup. Just so, completely sauce and filled soup. the freezer. Um, so you, you get home from, or you know you're going to run running a little late today, so you take it out of the freezer before you leave for work. You, you put the mononata in the refrigerator. By the time you get home, it's defrosted. So once again, you put the water up to boil for the pasta. By the time it boils and you drop your pasta, your main course is done. You, you might not are in the pan, and I'm, I'm not going to explain to you now what I'm going to do because uh, I want you to watch the, the video. And this also, if you use sauce from a jar, now, you know, now you're going to know how to make a tomato sauce. <laughs> uh, no jars. Yeah, no jars. No jars. No cans. Right. Fresh um, homemade sauce. It, it's a marinata. It's a light sauce. It's not a heavy ragu. It's light, so it goes with a lot of different things. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Now, once again, each one of those dishes that I'm going to make later on, under a half hour. It's quick. It's easy. Um, and you're eating good. And you're utilizing. You're cooking once. You're making one batch of mononata. You're doing a couple of containers. You're putting it in the refrigerator. And that's it, folks. You just go from there. Sorry, needed a sip of coffee. Coffee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, they wouldn't let me bring vodka in, so I, I bought bourbon. Um, no so kidding. It's coffee. He told me it was coffee. <laughs> um, but back to the meatloaf. Take a look at um, the video. It's early on on the list on my YouTube channel. Like I think it's like I said, one of the is either the second or the third, the third video we yeah. ever uploaded. It's um, down there. Yeah, and, and you'll you'll get to see how simple it is. Um, you know, again, making the bechamel and the cheese sauce. You have kids at home. You're going to eat it up, and you know what? You have some broccoli left over in that refrigerator. Ooh. Put it in there, too, and That's, they're going to eat that. You're giving me ideas now. Um, so here's a request for folks out there. Um, I'm always looking for ideas. If there's something that sits in the refrigerator after you make it and you don't know what to do with it, send me an email. Leftovers by Lou at gmail.com. It's on the screen. And say, Lou, I have this leftover. What do I do with it? And I'll come up with a, a recipe for you. And it saves you money, too. You don't have to go out to the store, buy Co something that's, that's either pre-made or something that you're going to make already. That's the whole point of the show. Save the money. Don't throw food out, guys. It's your money. The gas is getting expensive. We need to put that money elsewhere. <laughs> really? It's up to over $3 a gallon now. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. It's getting nuts. That's why I get gas in Jersey. Um, so that's really it. So, um, I have, you know, my, my group kind of sending me stuff on, uh, some simple stuff that, uh, that people have a hard time with. Um, the next show will go a little more in a little more detail about that. I should have some results back by then and, and we'll just, we'll go from there. Um. So that's really it right now. We're going to wrap it up a couple of minutes early. Now, before we wrap it up, I noticed you called it sauce. Some people out there are going to be disappointed in you that you're not calling it gravy. Um, Mononata is a sauce. 
You were just angered the, about 20,000 Italians. The, the, no, the com it's <laughs> marinata is a sauce, no two ways about it. You call it whatever you want. When you make a ragu and you put meat in it, some people call it a gravy. Some people call it a sauce. I'm not getting in the middle of that conversation at all. But call I, it, I certainly will. No, please don't. <laughs> I won't. Um, don't worry. <laughs> uh, call it whatever you want. Make it. Eat it. Enjoy it. Um, there are certain things that are oh, marinara is a sauce. Um, because it's light, it's quick, it takes minutes to make. It's like the whole macaroni versus pasta debate, how yeah. they're two separate things. Um, one of the things that you'll see on the video is uh, I only use whole tomatoes, whole plum tomatoes. Um, I like the idea of taking the whole tomato, squashing it with my hand, leaving the pieces of tomato in there, um, and, and cooking it with that. It's, it's garlic oil, it's quick, and again, you'll see in the video, I'll hopefully have it up um, by tonight. Either tonight or tomorrow, um, that's So, um, that's where we are, folks. Um, again, go onto the YouTube, like us, share us, talk to your friends. If you like the show, you can send comments uh, to the show. Uh, anything that I could do to help you food-wise, let me know. And put money uh, back in your pocket. Put money back in, short of coming over your house and cooking it for you, because I'm not going to do that. Not yet. No, <laughs> no, no house calls. No house calls as of yet. Um, so please, once again, send me some stuff. Uh, Leftoversbylou at gmail.com. And I, I answer everybody. I just sent um, one of my wife's friends uh, sent me a request for uh, rice pudding. Um, so I did. I went through my recipe book, and uh, I found an old recipe for rice pudding, and it had notes on the bottom. I have no idea what I, what I was going to do. But I sent them not only the recipe, I sent them all the notes, too. I said, yeah, figure it out. Do whatever you want, do whatever you want to do with it. There's no rules. Uh, no, nah, but you know what? It was I, I had stuff like uh, uh, toasted shredded coconuts, coconut milk, uh, chocolate shavings. So obviously it was stuff that I wanted to uh, put into the rice pudding, but I, it's on the recipe. And... Um, that's really it. So, Mike, if you're watching the show, um, I hope you made the rice the rice pudding uh, with my recipe, and um, I hope it came good. And you know what? Playing, it, it doesn't hurt because it's only going to help your skills. You're going to, you know what? Instead of um, a cup and a half of milk with the rice, you put a little bit of the coconut milk in there and take the whole milk out, or you're adding the shredded coconut to that, or you're adding, I think I had chips and shredded uh, shaved chocolate, and I had- Or chocolate the size of a quarter. I, one, of the, one, yeah, one of the notes, I'll tell everybody that story at another time. One of the things I put, one of the notes was, because I only typed it last night, so I remember. I said, uh, if you add raisins, use the light raisins. Don't use the dark. They'll look like bugs. <laughs> um, so please, folks, uh, watch the shows, watch the videos, enjoy. Send me a note, and we are all good. Um, until next time. And, until next time, please, again, like us, share us. Uh, it's important to keep it going to help people. Anything I could do. Till next time, be safe and good cooking.